Well, hello again and uh, welcome back to Classic Dirt Bike TV where of course we uh, do our very best to try and bring you uh, more of those old school uh, vintage dirt bikes from way back in the day. Now if you're a brand new subscriber to CDB uh, TV then uh, welcome aboard and uh, of course thanks to your help uh, my current uh, subscriber total is now well over 17,000 so uh, thanks again for your continuing support of my uh, YouTube channel. So right now we're going to take a look at another uh, German uh, Michael machine. Now this is a bike that I spotted at the recent uh, Telford uh, Classic Dirt Bike Show and this is said to be uh, one of only eight uh, prototype uh, bikes that were built by Michael in 1980. 81. So let's uh, jump straight into that video now and take a look at this quite rare and unusual machine. Now we've without doubt uh, shown some uh, quite rare vintage dirt bikes here on my channel in the last few years and this uh, 1982 490 Michael prototype is uh, yet again another uh, such uh, rarity and this is one of uh, many uh, German Michaels that are all part of the vast uh, Norbert van Dunn collection who uh, is a collector and enthusiast on all things relating uh, to the Michael mark. Now you may remember that uh, we've uh, showcased a few of Norbert's classics and uh, rare bikes here on my channel in previous uh, videos and uh, his assortment of uh, Michael machines is uh, like a motorcycle shrine to the great uh, German uh, bike manufacturer of the 1970s and uh, 1980s. Now this uh, rare and unusual Michael twin is uh, just one of the bikes that Norbert has in his collection and it's said that uh, he got the inspiration to build this little twin after he saw uh, a similar bike that was built by German motocross racing legend uh, Wolfgang uh, Schrader. But as you can see, it's certainly an unusual uh, little bike and uh, I bet it sounds absolutely fantastic as well with those uh, twin expansion chambers. But this is another uh, rare Michael Beast that Norbert has in his collection, which is a, a 1977 Works 250 bike that uh, certainly has some nice factory components bolted onto it. So uh, you can see that uh, Norbert has quite a few rarities in his compendium of uh, Michael machines. And uh, who knows, maybe one day uh, Classic Dirt Bike uh, TV will uh, make a quick visit to Norbert's man cave and uh, check out uh, some of his fantastic uh, Michael machines. So anyhow, let's get uh, back to our featured bike, which is uh, actually a prototype uh, 1982 machine, but uh, in actual fact, uh, this particular race bike was uh, made in 1981, and it was just one of eight experimental factory made bikes that were uh, used uh, to help Michael uh, make the transition from uh, what was the hugely successful uh, 1981 490 twin shop race bike uh, to what was going to be a much more modern and bang up to date uh, single rear shot motocrosser for uh, 1982. So as far as I'm led to believe the actual design of the bike's frame was pretty much uh, already decided by the end of 1981 and this uh, brand new chassis uh, had a very similar geometry from the previous years uh, 490 uh, Mega 2 although uh, naturally uh, there were a few subtle changes made to the frame's rear end to uh, accommodate the brand new single shock that was going to be bolted onto the back but uh, it wasn't the fact that this 19 82 prototype bike it had a monoshock suspension system instead of a twin shock configuration. It was uh, actually the shock to swing arm linkage that was causing all of the controversy among other uh, off-road uh, manufacturers. Now this uh, quite simple looking uh, linkage system that connected at the bottom of the shock to the swing arm was said to be designed uh, by Kent Olens from Sweden and uh, much 
of the bike's initial development and testing work uh, on the suspension was said to have been carried out by the legendary uh, Hans Meisch and Ivan uh, van der Broek. Although there uh, seemed to have been uh, some argument uh, bandied about by other uh, manufacturers that this Kent Olin's design uh, linkage uh, was uh, a copy of the linkage system that was designed by Honda two years uh, earlier and I'm not uh, entirely sure if there was actually any uh, litigation or copyright uh, legal challenge made in a court of law to uh, challenge uh, this claim but uh, this uh, quite controversial linkage it still played a big part in why Michael uh, never actually put this particular suspension system onto their uh, 1982 production bike so uh, that particular part of this uh, prototype uh, makes this machine a very rare bike in terms of it being a design that never actually uh, went into uh, general sale. Although whatever became of the other seven uh, pre-production 82 bikes that were said to have been built alongside uh, this example, uh, I don't know. But uh, then again, we are uh, quite fortunate that we are uh, still being able to take a look at at least one of those original eight bikes. Now, with regards to the chassis rear swing arm, uh, Michael still opted uh, to continue with the tried and tested steel uh, swing arm and uh, they weren't tempted to go for a much lighter uh, alloy uh, swing arm on this 82 uh, pre-production bike. But uh, although the steel item uh, looks like it's just a simple box section construction, it's actually made from uh, two uh, U-shaped pieces of metal that are then welded together to form the box shape and uh, what uh, Michael's thinking was to manufacture this part in this particular way uh, I'm not sure but uh, you'd think that just a standard box section piece of steel with no welding uh, would be a much easier and uh, safer way to construct uh, this part. But just exactly uh, what this uh, Poggi Pellini titanium uh, sticker uh, is all about on the swing arm I, I don't exactly know because uh, the swing arm is most definitely made uh, from steel but uh, I suppose it could just be a sticker that's been placed on the swing arm just to add a bit of uh, intrigue to this uh, prototype model. So moving on to the bike's uh, power plant which has the uh, 1982 490cc uh, motor which and surprisingly is still a piston port engine when you'd maybe think that uh, Michael uh, would have possibly gone for the much better reed valve engine on their new 82 uh, model but as you can see it's still uh, using a big uh, Bing carburetor with that angled alloy induction pipe so as to make way for the brand new single monoshock suspension uh, at the rear. Now also new for our 1982 prototype bike was uh, a brand new style alloy airbox which uh, replaced the plastic items that we had on the 81 uh, Ford 90 Mega 2 twin shocker and uh, in my view these uh, alloy airboxes are uh, much nicer and more practical than those uh, brittle uh, plastic ones. But as to whether there have been any upgraded parts or any tuning done uh, to this motor for 1982, I'm not uh, sure. And uh, I certainly don't think that Michael uh, would have wanted to change much on this 490 engine, considering how uh, awesome and successful it had been in the old uh, twin shot bike uh, the year before. So my guess would be that uh, they probably uh, just thought along the lines of, uh, if it ain't broke, then why uh, fix it? But uh, the power and the grunt that was served up by these big open class two strokers was just simply astounding. And uh, these power plants had uh, more than enough horses to satisfy even the biggest of power mad junkies. And again, up at the front of the bike, I expect that there uh, would have uh, been very little 
in the way of change uh, from the front end of the 1981 490, which, uh, although uh, never really had uh, top of the range high quality uh, motocross suspension, the stock uh, Michael original item still uh, worked very well if they were uh, set up right with the proper spring rates and uh, correct weights of oil and air uh, in the stanchions. And uh, as you can see, we still had old school drum brakes for 1982. But uh, having said that, these old friction stoppers still did quite a good job and uh, managed to keep the old uh, Mega 2 bike from 81 in check. But uh, it wouldn't be too long uh, down the road before uh, Michael were then going to uh, catch up with many of the other off-road bike manufacturers of their time and start to fit uh, more modern hydraulic disc brakes on to their uh, motocross uh, machines. But certainly uh, not many changes to this uh, rear brake and hub, as it all looks uh, very familiar to the previous year's bike. But uh, again, even although uh, this was an antique uh, stopping system, uh, they were still uh, very good and uh, perfectly adequate to slow up these big 490 open-class uh, rocket ships. So as we've already uh, mentioned, the biggest uh, change from the 1981 to this 1982 machine was to move on uh, to this single uh, monoshock suspension here at the rear, which was normally a quite uh, good high-quality uh, Olin's uh, suspension shock, which uh, had a connecting pipe to transfer the oil and gas uh, to and from this remote uh, reservoir that was bolted on uh, to the chassis here at the front of the frame. And naturally, uh, this uh, storage device was placed here so that the on uh, rushing air could help cool the unit because uh, the shock uh, oil and gas uh, did have a tendency to overheat if that rear suspension was worked hard. And uh, as far as I know, uh, this system uh, did work uh, very well. But uh, as you can see, this 1982 prototype's exhaust expansion chamber uh, looks uh, almost identical to the previous year's uh, Mega 2 490 model. And it doesn't look like our bikes had much track action either because this pipe's uh, almost uh, totally free from any dings, dents or other uh, damage. But as I remember, the 81 model had a black, mild steel tailpipe here at the rear, but uh, on this 82 bike it's a much lighter uh, alloy part that Michael have gone with, which uh, does add a little bit of bling to the machine, and of course it will be uh, a few grams lighter than the previous uh, steel item. But I'm sure you're well aware that uh, Michael have been using these uh, plastic fuel cells uh, for quite a few years now, ever since they uh, gave up uh, those uh, alloy coffin-shaped tanks of the early uh, 1970s, and of course those uh, beautiful uh, round tanks on the 1979 models, because it was uh, 1980 when Michael uh, made the switch. But the 82's uh, seat doesn't look like it's gone through any updates compared to its 81 uh, predecessor, although uh, having said that, it may look a little bit slimmer than the big uh, Mega 2's of 81, and who knows, uh, maybe this was just to make the bike a little more appealing to those riders that are uh, vertically challenged and are a bit short in uh, the leg department. Now, as far as I can make out, the plastics uh, once more are uh, more or less unchanged from the old uh, Mega 2, as far as I can make out, as uh, these side panels uh, do look eerily similar to the older bike. Now, the front and the rear uh, mudguards are probably uh, more stock items from Michael's uh, parts department, but uh, these items are easily obtainable nowadays, so uh, these parts could have come from a multitude of uh, different sources. 
And so uh, up at the 490s uh, controls department, we have a set of uh, period correct handlebars uh, with the crossbar, of course, this time uh, welded on and not by uh, using clamps as is uh, the modern equivalent nowadays. But uh, certainly a decent uh, Swedish made uh, Gunnar Gasser throttle twist grip there to try and help control uh, some of those uh, mad mental horses just waiting to be unleashed from that big 490 two-stroke engine. And uh, once again, very good quality Magura alloy uh, ball end levers and their associated uh, lever covers there as well because uh, these will help to keep dust, dirt and uh, moisture from entering the cable ends and the lever pivots when the bikes raced in wet or muddy conditions. So uh, another uh, quite rare bike belonging to Norbert uh, van Dunn, although some of my uh, Michael enthusiasts out there will just take a look at this example and uh, wonder why these bikes uh, still look very similar to the original 82 uh, production machines and uh, I suppose that's quite a decent argument but uh, I think that the main reason these uh, never went into production was the uh, controversy uh, surrounding that rear linkage system being uh, far too similar to the Honda uh, setup and uh, let's face it Michael already had their share of uh, court appearances up until then so they could certainly do without adding another uh, court case to their already packed uh, litigation list. Although, as I said, uh, this was uh, just one of eight prototype bikes that were built in 1981, although uh, whatever became of the other seven, I haven't uh, a clue. But then again, maybe some of our uh, YouTube viewers might own or even know the whereabouts of the remaining uh, bikes, but uh, we still have to thank this man here, uh, Norbert uh, Van Dunn, for bringing this uh, very rare bike over to the UK so that we could all uh, have uh, a look at it. And if this is the quality of the bikes that Norbert has in his collection, I just can't wait uh, to see the rest. So there you have it, another uh, quite a rare machine from the Norbert uh, Van Dunn collection. That's Norbert's uh, 1982 prototype uh, Michael uh, 490. Right, so coming up next here on CDB uh, TV, I've been asked by a uh, popular request if I could do an updated version on uh, Cecil Pearson's lovely collection of uh, Rickman Jap uh, Scramblers. Now, uh, this collection of Jap Scramblers must be uh, one of the rarest collection of machines uh, in Europe and possibly in the world because uh, Cecil started off with uh, just one uh, Rickman uh, Jap Scrambler and uh, he now has uh, nine in his collection at home in Northern Ireland. So we'll be taking a look at this beautiful collection of Rickman Jap Scramblers when we return here to CDB uh, TV. So until the next time, everybody out there, continue to look after yourself and I'll see you soon. <laughs> <laughs>